A few days ago I recorded a video about some chemistry phobias that I used to have involving batteries and strange looking chemicals that were really pretty harmless. And then I had a subscriber tell me that he had a little bit of a phobia with shark attacks when he realized that um, he, he was putting himself in much bigger danger in terms of lightning strikes when he went out to the ocean. It made me realize I had a number of phobias myself that were a little bit odd and I thought I'd make a video to um, discuss how stupid I was in the past. Um, when I was a little bit younger, I used to worry because, um, you know, I didn't lose my virginity until my early 20s. And I worried as year after year went by and I didn't get involved in a relationship, I would worry that I would grow old and never be able to date anybody in that age bracket anymore. You know, I would get, get into my 20s, my 30s, my 40s, and then I would never be able to date somebody who was much younger than that. And um, as a result, I got myself into a number of rotten relationships just so I could kind of check that off my, my list, if you will. It was kind of dumb because at the end of the day, all I did was kind of check a box in the in the list without really acquiring very much out of the relationship. Um, but um, when I was about 18 or 19 years old, I started eating considerably healthier. And by the time I was 20 or 21, the results were kind of starting to show that, um, and I realized that, you know, I was 22, 23, but um, I, my body was saying I was only 20. 20. When I was 23, 24, there started to be a good gap between what my ID said and what my body uh, said in terms of my age. And that's when I realized, oh my God, I really do have a lot of time to, um, to date. And that's when I, um, started to relax that fear and and uh, actually I wanted to do other things besides dating. I wanted to write this world's strongest computer game. I wanted to travel and dating can wait because my body will allow me to wait. I did to, to, a, to a lesser extent I still feel that way. Not as much as I did in my mid-twenties but I still feel that way to some extent. It's, that's good. I, I've lost that phobia since then. I had a fear of flying for many years. Um, you you got to remember, I was 13 years old when 9-11, well, I was 14 years old when 9-11 happened. It was big news, and um, it actually kind of hit home to me because my dad was getting ready to go to a conference on the morning of 9-11, and um, he had made it to the airport, and obviously the flight was canceled, and he turned back, and he got stuck in traffic, and... Um, I, I was going to college part time at this time, and we got to the um, to the registrar's office to um, to, um, to to pay a bill, and um, all of a sudden, one of my professors comes running down the hallway. My mom and I were in the we were in the registrar's office, and the professor just comes running down, saying that a, that a plane had hit the twin towers, and. Um, I, I, I only knew the Twin Towers because I had studied about in 1993 when there was a truck bombing. And that's the only reason I knew about the Twin Towers. I didn't really know what they were there for because I was only going to college part-time to study math. You know, I didn't really study much about American history, especially recent history. And so I just assumed it was an accident because I knew it was the tallest tower in the United States at the time. And um, so he said, no, no, two planes had hit the towers. And um, you got to remember, right, I never really liked flying in the first place. So I was, when I was 14 years old, I was still eating a standard American diet. My family and I would go to Taiwan, and um, fast food is very expensive there. American fast food, if you go to a Burger King or a McDonald's, or you could just go to the grocery store and get a get a two liter bottle of soda. It's very expensive over in Taiwan. Not to mention, my family kind of wants to enjoy the culture while we're there. They don't want to they don't want to fly halfway around the world just to sit down at a Burger King. And so I, I, I kind of hated travel just for that reason. Um, and so anyway, so I, after that, I didn't want to fly again. You know, I um, actually I did fly uh, one more time after that, and I was scared to death, and I caused a lot of trouble for my family because of how much anxiety I brought to the trip with me. I came back, and um, I uh, got some therapy for it, but not long after that, Columbia exploded! 
And that was big news for me as well because I love to watch uh, space exploration and, um, and uh, didn't want to fly after that. And around the same time, um, my cousin was going to school in uh, Toronto. We lived in Pittsburgh, so this is a four or five hour drive away. And I really enjoyed the road trips um, because we would see a lot of things. Road trips are one of the few times where um, my, uh, see my brother was five years old at the time. I was 18 at that time. Road trips are one of the few times that he and I would literally sit down and talk for five hours. Normally we go our own ways. You know, I want to write my computer games. He wants to, uh, when he was five years old, he knows what he wanted to do, but certainly not write computer games. And it, it kind of forced us together. Um, and um, so it was nice. Um, and I didn't have the anxiety involved. Obviously, there was a much bigger risk of being in the car than being in an airplane, or, you know, the car was probably even more dangerous than being on a space shuttle, now that I think about it. But uh, it, didn't, it didn't really feel that way to me. That This is where phobia can be very irrational sometimes. Um, when I started to eat healthier, um, one of the big reasons I started to eat healthier, one of the first uh, foods that I, that I uh, cut from my diet was soda, obviously. I used to drink lots and lots of soda, um, five, six, seven liters a, a day sometimes. And, um, you know, my parents used to try to get me to cut back, and it didn't work. But when I stopped drinking it, it worked, and I had big fears of relapsing because... You know, everybody's telling me, even to this day, I go to a party, uh, my family knows they don't have to bother me about this anymore, but when I go to a party and it's a new, a, a new social crowd, or not even necessarily a party, anytime I make a big fuss about uh, not drinking soda, everybody will tell me that an occasional soda is, is okay. The, the point is, I don't even crave it anymore. To, 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 to drink one soda would be kind of like, kind of like petting the bear, you know, why would you do that? And um, so I used to have nightmares all the time that I had relapsed. I Actually, my most recent nightmare about that probably wasn't that long ago. I, I, I don't really keep track of it anymore. But when I do have a nightmare like that, I usually will myself to wake up. And, and, and usually I just wake up and it's all good. Um, a few nights ago, uh, I had a... I had a nightmare that somebody spilled some kind of toxic chemical um, in my car. I don't know why I all of a sudden dreamt this up, but uh, I, I, I couldn't even identify what the chemical was, but it was some kind of compound of mercury and cyanide and, and so all sorts of toxic stuff. And so it just made me worry about how I was going to clean up the contamination because I spent a lot of time in my car. I had a lot of fear involving car accidents. I had a car accident three years ago, and um, I didn't drive for eight months. And um, for, for, for the first time in a long time, I actually liked flying better than driving. It was kind of weird how it flip-flopped. Um, I flew to Taiwan during that time for a conference, but I didn't drive. And um, I remember thinking about when I was going to drive again. I, I had totaled my Honda Accord, and I went um, just kind of browsing for cars. I would go to the used car you know, dealer and just kind of browse around. I never test drove anything because I would close my eyes and think about driving and all I could think about was boom, 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 boom. <laughs> and uh, and uh, it was just that. Um, this is not, not, not a good feeling. Not a good feeling, not a good feeling to have. Actually, um, just a few weeks ago, um, I... Uh, it was just, just about to get to the third anniversary of the car accident, and I realized I could switch insurance and get a much better deal after that falls off my record. And for the days leading up to the three-year anniversary of that first accident, oh, I didn't want to drive because I knew I would get really disappointed if I had an accident when, when that, that first accident was going to fall off my record. Oh, I, after that one fell off, I only had one, so I got a better deal switching. But before, before making that switch, I, I went three days without driving because I, I have this um, loss aversion, if you will. I, I, really, I really hate, hate uh, disappointment. You know, I'd rather give up the three days of driving, you know, give up going to um, some of my favorite social events or, or have to walk. Again, walking might even be more dangerous. Who knows? Uh, but, 
I just have this lost aversion kind of mentality sometimes, and it can be irrational at times. It can be irrational. I, don't get me wrong, I, I don't think what I'm doing was rational in terms of an economic point of view or anything, um, but phobias are just like that. They're very irrational sometimes. Um, I've never thought about shark attacks, though. Actually, quite the opposite. You know, my mom, when I was um, 16 years old, I used to love to walk long distances and, and get exercise and um, my mom would be, this would be broad daylight and she would be worried about me getting hit by a car or uh, run into trouble. You know, I used to have um, uh, classmates, uh, ex-classmates from high school who would want to cause me trouble and um, the way I would point this out to my mom um, I don't know if this is the exact words that I use, but I said, yeah, life is pretty risky, but what about the risk of um, me not getting exercise and getting overweight and getting, you know, type 2 diabetes? Because my mom had type 2 diabetes, she could relate to that, and so that uh, or getting um, liver cancer, because my, my mom's uh, father had liver cancer. I kind of used a few things that she could relate to. And she was like, well, yeah, you could just you could just walk on our treadmill at home. And I'm like, well, yeah, but I'm never motivated to. I'm very much motivated to walk two or three miles to the store. <laughs> and um, it, just, it just really uh, shows that all the pieces of the equation have to be put together. And, uh, and you, you really have to, to look at the big picture. And so I never had a big phobia of that. Obviously, if my parents tried to use the same logic on me for flying, I probably couldn't comprehend that either. So it just goes to show how, how irrational phobias can get sometimes. Thanks for watching.